Welcome to the Net Bible Church YouTube channel. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of our new uploads. If you'd like more information about the Net Bible Church or how you could donate, please click on the link below. Thank you so much for watching. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you know, this just, uh, it just keeps stirring in me like I was, uh, we talked about, I don't know, a couple sermons ago services, we were talking about how um, they use the phrase in the islands, more better, you know, and uh, it just means something's better. <laughs> it's more better for you. And, um, you know, just thinking along those lines and thinking about God's word and how um, we as, as people are and um, how God is so much higher and so much greater. We're 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 confined to this this human body that God has given us as a gift to be able to be on this planet, but God is not confined to anything, amen. Because God is everywhere all the time, but the only thing He's confined to is doing things in our life because He He made it that He would do things according to faith, amen. Let's start with Ephesians in chapter three. Hallelujah. We're all familiar with this scripture, Ephesians chapter 3 out of the New International Version, and it's starting at 14. Um, we prayed these, this prayer many times. One of, the, uh, one of Paul's prayers that he prayed for the, the Ephesian church, and if you look at all his prayers that he prayed for all the churches, they were all very similar. This particular one, starting in verse 14, Ephesians 3, 14, for this reason, I kneel before the Father. If you want to know what the reason was, then you have to look at above verse 14, amen, looking at chapter 2 in the beginning of chapter 3. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, amen, <laughs> ah, Hallelujah. out of his glorious riches, you know, and I was thinking about that even when we were praying and thinking about um the bounty of God thinking I just I was just in prayer and just thanking God when I was sitting up here for um, church prayer earlier and I was just thanking God for his bounty you know and um, the word bounty means something that is given generously amen it's literally a, a, a liberality <laughs> liberality liberality li liberality in giving and it's yield a special especially of a crop it's a reward or a premium of subsidy so in other words it's an abundance <laughs> amen and I love that because it says that I pray out of your glorious riches his abundance his bounty amen out of his riches that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. In other words, because of the Holy Ghost that lives in us, God works through the Holy Ghost in us. Amen? That's what he's saying. I pray out of your glorious riches that he, may, that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So the Holy Ghost within us is the one who strengthens us. Amen? Hallelujah. So that Christ, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Amen. Christ in reference to the anointing. Because when they say Jesus Christ, it means Jesus Christo. It's Jesus, the anointed one. He was separated by God and anointed by God, empowered by God empowered by the Holy Ghost. Remember when he was water baptized, he went out to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and it said he came back full of power and the Holy Ghost. And so this is what Paul was praying, that we would, out of God's abundance, out of his riches, out of his bounty, I like the word bounty because we kind of use that around, around Thanksgiving time, and bounty just means it's right after harvest season, so we've got so much stuff. People are making pies out of these things. 
It's like, what are you going to do? We'll make pumpkin muffins, pumpkin we'll have pumpkin lattes. We've got pumpkin, pumpkin. Because there's so much of abundance that people are figuring out what to use it for and what to do with it. And we're talking about God's riches, which are way further than the earth's abundance in riches. Amen? But he's talking about it's, it's by the Spirit. So when Jesus went out into the wilderness and he came back full of the Holy Ghost and power, and then Jesus told the disciples, remember, before he ascended, right before he ascended, he said, wait for the Holy Ghost. When he comes, you will be full of power. How did he know that? Because he was full of the Holy Ghost and power. And how vitally important it is that we be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? If we're full of other stuff, then we won't have the power. <laughs> but when we're full of the Holy Ghost, we'll be full of power. Amen? So he's saying power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love. <clears throat> this, it, this can take some work sometimes. But we must be rooted and established in love. And we can't, it, let me just say, we can't, you know, they say fake it till you make it. But a lot of people are just living their whole lives faking it. We've got to make it. <laughs> We've got to make it because the spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the spirit of power is the spirit of love. Amen. Amen. And he says, you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp. That means get, get a handle on it. Get, get, a, get your mind wrapped around it. Get yourself rooted in it. <clears throat> That's what he's talking about here. That being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the, the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. We must absolutely... And let me just say, we won't know this love unless we experience, experience the power of the Holy Ghost. Because the same spirit, the same spirit of power is the same spirit of love. Because faith works by love. Amen? And faith is our power. So that it says, and to know this love, to know this love that surpasses knowledge. That means I can't teach you about something you have to experience. I can tell you about it, but you have to experience it. And the only way you can experience it is by getting in the presence of it. <laughs> or I should say in the presence of him who is the love of God. That's been shed, you know, the word of God says the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, right? The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So the love's in there. Amen. We got to work it out so that we be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more, we're talking about him, God, the third person of God that lives in you, Right? To him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. That means 2,000 years ago they could read the scripture and it had same meant, meant the same thing and had the same power in it. And in 2,000 years from now it could be the same exact scripture, mean the same exact thing and the same power. Amen. And it says, to him be the glory of the church in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So you could see what God was trying to get across. And we have to, we have to start wrapping our, our hearts and our thoughts and our lives around these scriptures that mean so much. You know, that's just this scripture is something we pray. We just pray through it. Let's go on to the next one. We just pray through it. Okay, we prayed that. Let's, what's the next one? You know, no, look how much meat is in here that we need to eat and digest. He said, for this reason I kneel before the Father in the, from whom every family in heaven and earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, we could preach on that for a year. His glorious riches. God will supply all of our needs according to his 
glorious riches. Do we even have an idea what his glorious riches are? If anybody in this place can explain something to me, explain this to me about his glorious riches. Can anybody get their news wrapped around that one? It's so, so vast that we have to think about it and ponder it, and we have to ask the Holy Ghost to reveal these things to us so that we can see it and know it and understand these things. And then we'll just get a little smidge, and then we need to ask for more. We need to know more. Why? Because there's so much more. It's immeasurable. You can't measure it, just like the universe has no end. You can't measure it. This is immeasurable. His bounty. The glorious riches of God are immeasurable. And so I was thinking about how God knows what's best for us and how much is a, of a father, our spiritual father. We're born again. We're his children. We're born of the spirit. We've been conceived by God himself. Wrap your head around that one. <laughs> We've been, spiritually speaking, we're conceived by God. We're his children, and he wants more better for us. He wants immeasurably more better, immeasurably more according to his glorious riches, not the world standard, not according to what, you know, who drives this and who lives there and wears this and does. None of that. God has far better for us. You know, somebody might think it's the coolest thing in the world to live on the backside of the desert. Not I. <laughs> and if that's what they, that's where God called them and that's what they love, and then you know, have your fun. <laughs> but God knows each of us as individuals, and he knows our desires of our hearts because he put those desires in there. Not all the desires that we have are the desires of God. <laughs> but we've got to get familiar with the desires because God has more better for us. Amen. We're his offsprings. We have to trust that he wants more better, more better for us. Amen? He has such abundance, and we have shortchanged God in the price that he paid that we could have abundance. I'm not talking about driving the most fancy cars and all. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about abundant life. Let me just say, people that are abundant in their souls and hearts, and they're rich, they're rich in peace and rest and joy. They're rich. They're just rich in the presence of God. They don't even think about those things because they know that their God is well able to take care of them and supply all of their needs. Whatever they need, it's going gonna, it's gonna to find its way. Amen? And so... The, the thing about, I was thinking about, because uh, Rev G, uh, somebody broke his car window. <laughs> We're not sure. I think it was Sunday night. It was out in the parking lot. And um, somebody busted his car window, and somebody came and knocked on her door and said, hey, got some bad news. Somebody broke your car window. And I was thinking, the stinking devil, right away. Stinking, stupid devil. And I was thinking about how God has given us power and authority. We have a tendency to think, well, if God wants us to have it, it's just going to fall on us. Or if God wants us to have it, it's, you know, these things are just going to happen. We don't understand that you've got to fight for what's already yours. Like, let's say, for instance, whoever broke that car window, if he had been standing next to the car, that wouldn't have happened. Because he would have fought for what was his. I'm just saying, let me just say, I'm explaining this naturally. Even though if we're in the spirit and on top of things spiritually, then the devil's going to get in less and less. Amen? We got we to gotta man the fort. <laughs> we used to say that all the time we were growing up. We grew up in a neighborhood where they were doing a lot of construction. And every construction site was a war zone. As far as we were concerned, there was a war going on there, and we were nurses, and they were out shooting each, <laughs> you know, kids running around shooting each other, and medics, a couple kids bringing them in, oh, they got shot, you know, and we're making mud pies and piling them on the foundations. 
And then they build a house and we have to go find another foundation to have a war zone. <laughs> what I'm saying is God has already given us all of these things. God has already blessed us in heavenly places far beyond what we could ask or think or even imagine. These are things are ours already. The abundance, the bounty is ours now. So we're just like, well, oh, really? I didn't know that. Well, why didn't we know that? We should know that. We should actually know that. How do, let me just say, because this is more better. Knowing what's in here is more better than knowing anything else in your life. Because this supersedes everything else. The less you know about this, the more worse it's going to be. The more you know about this, the more better it's going to be. Amen. And so, and, and we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Our salvation is the treasure of, that God has given us. And so a lot of times people don't even know that there's an abundance. The bounty, there's a bounty for each and every one of us. Was a, a lot of Christians don't even know there's a bounty. They just think, well, you know, if, if I could just scrape by, you know, and have mercy and throw some ashes on myself, you know. A lot of times Christians think, you know, the more they suffer, the more points they're getting. You know, that's not how the system works at all. And God said in his word that he is more better for us. First and foremost, you got to know what the more better is, according to his riches and glory. Amen? The first and foremost is that you could walk with God. You could walk with God, know God, talk to God like a man talks to a friend. You can know his love and know his power and know the bounty that he has already provided for you. And then, number one, you have to protect that. When you know it, you protect it. Amen? I, I, I really see Rev G standing by his car and some kid coming up and going to break it with whatever. Some, they said that there's some kid going around breaking windows with the skateboard. <laughs> in other parts of Oxford. So he's skating around town and to break windows. And so I am sure if he was standing there that he was gonna let, that he would let that, whoever broke that window, that he would just stand there and let it happen. Oh no, if you ever seen Rev G in action, he would not, he would fight for what belonged to him. And we as Christians, sometimes we have to fight for what belongs to us. I'm not talking about fighting people. I'm talking about fighting the devil. The devil can steal you blind. And you just sit there and let him. Uh, let me just say, it's our bounty. It's ours. And the devil's trying to take what's ours. What's already ours. He's trying to take it and steal it from us. You ever notice things will be going good and all of a sudden it just stops? And then all this other weird stuff's happening. And you're like, God's got a plan. And we got to take authority over the devil. It, the, we have to fight for this bounty. You know? And, and, and first and foremost, but we have to know what the bounty is. we we got to hunt and seek God's face. You know? we got to be like bounty hunters. <laughs> That's our bounty, and we're hunting it. We're not letting somebody else just come and take all of it. The glorious riches of God that's already in us in Christ Jesus. You know, and sometimes, you know, we as, we as people, as Christians, we always, you know, we can get really ugly and get mean and whiny and insistent on our ways and this is my idea and this is what I want to do and this is how I'm going to do it and this is what I think is God and, you know, and, 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 no, and just bent on what they think is God. And here God wants to bless them with something better, but they're totally closed off to it because they're bent on this. I'm going to, instead of like, why don't you just shush and sit down and find out what God has because he has more better. It's always more better for you. And so, you know, people get in situations where it's like, you know, they got their way. You ever get your way about something and then realize that wasn't really, what a, that was not a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, anybody ever do anything or go someplace or, you know, you know, you think, oh, I want to go visit somebody. And you go there and what a disaster, or, you know, or, you, you know, just anything, you know, like you bought something, you had to have it and you brought it home and you're like, oh, my gosh, what was I thinking? I spent this money and it was a disaster. There's so many things that we do that are not God's best, but we're just bent on having a big old mess. God wants us to have more better. He wants us to have out of his glorious riches. 
And the only way we can find out what that is is in him and in his presence, in prayer and in, in worship. Amen. He's so good and he loves us so much. In, in God, there, the Israelites, well, God promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. It didn't just fall on them. They had to fight for what was theirs. God already said it was theirs. He, it was theirs. <laughs> well, why couldn't they just say, excuse me, y'all got to leave because God said this is ours. <laughs> and that's, let me say, that showed physically, physically they fought. Spiritually, we must fight. Spiritually, we have to fight for what's already ours. Amen. That bounty is ours, and we got to find out what belongs. Is we got to become bounty hunters because you're going to die, and then you're going to find all the things that God had for you in this life that you never partook of. That's why one time I had this little mini vision. I saw a man's back, and it looked like hamburger, and I like closed my eyes right away because it was like, oh, what was that? And the Lord said, "That's what I did for you to walk in divine healing." And I said, "Lord, don't let me ever, ever." Take for granted the price that you paid that I can have healing and health. I don't ever want to get to heaven and, and say, well, maybe God didn't want me healed. Never. Never. That's why when people talk about God wants them sick, I'm like, mm, don't talk about my God like he's your God. Because my God don't make people sick. My God heals people. It's part of his bounty. <laughs> it's, part, it's part of his glorious riches. Healing. Peace. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Everything that we need is ours because of him. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just take that scripture and let God open that scripture to you, and then look at other scriptures that way and dig out what the, dig out the bounty and the treasure that's in the scriptures, in those words for you, because it's more better for you to know. You die and go to heaven and all, all the things that you could have been blessed with on this earth. There's a, let me just say, the blessings of this earth are different than the blessings of heaven. But why can't we enjoy the blessings that God has provided for us to have here? Well, forget about heaven. That'll take care of itself. Amen? How many want to be bounty hunters? Amen? And I ain't talking about dogs. <laughs> I'm talking about bounty hunter. I'm going to, God has given us bounty. Generous. That means more than enough immeasurably more than we can think or ask or even imagine. Isn't God good? Amen, 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 hallelujah. We just thank you, Father God, for your precious holy word. We thank you that you made these promises to us because of your great love. And I thank you, Father God, that we will hold these words dear to our heart. And we will seek it because it's more better for us to know what you have already done for us. In Jesus' name, all those agreed said, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Um, just on the lines of it, just, that just keeps rolling about, you know, this is more better for us, knowing this digging out what belongs to us. Amen. This is all ours. All we got to do, got to dig it out. Amen. Being in the presence of God is more better. Prayer, more better. Worship, more better. Amen. <laughs>